Hi, everyone. Welcome to Toronto Machine Learning Summit 2020. <coughs> My name is Nadia, and I work at NILAS as a senior machine learning engineer. Today, I'm honored to be here and to have the opportunity to introduce one of our amazing speakers. Before starting, I would like to remind you that if you have a question, please post it in the chat. I will collect all the questions and ask, ask them directly to our speaker after the presentation. So our speaker is Sunyu Zhu. Sunyu Zhu is a Bellevue family professor of industrial engineer and operation research at Columbia University in New York. He was the Nomura Professor of Mathematical Finance, the Director of Nomura Center for Mathematical Finance, and the Director of Oxford and IE Financial Big Data Lab at the University of Oxford during 2007-2016, before joining Columbia. His research includes uh, reinforcement learning in continuous time and spaces, quantitative behavioral finance model that incorporate human emotion and psychology into financial decision making, and intelligent wealth management solution using stochastic control and machine learning techniques. Professor Zhu is known for his work in the indefinite stochastic LQ control theory and application to dynamic mean variance portfolio selection in asset allocation and the pricing under cumulative prospective theory and in general time inconsistent problem. He directs the NIE Center for Intelligent Asset Management, a research center founded by a fintech company at Columbia. He has addressed the 2010 International Congress of Mathematicians and has been awarded the Wolfson Research Award from the Royal Society, the Outstanding Paper Prize from the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics, the Humboldt Distinguished Lecturer, uh, the Alexander von Humboldt Research Fellowship, and the Archimedes Lecturer at Columbia. He is both an IEEE Fellow and a SAAM fellow, Professor Zhu received his PhD in operational research and control theory from Fundan University in China in 1989. Please join me in welcoming Professor Zhu. Uh, thank you, Nadia, for the nice and lengthy introduction. Um, also, I would like to thank uh, the organizer uh, for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my recent uh, research on reinforcement learning um, in this conference. So uh, the title of my talk is Reinforcement Learning via Stochastic Control. I think the main purpose is to try to connect these two big areas. One is reinforcement learning and the other is Stochastic Control. Uh, because it seems to me that the two areas have developed sort of independently somehow, and they don't really talk to each other uh, that, that often, okay? So I hope this will represent an effort uh, to, to sort of communicate between the two areas. All right, so, so this is the plan of my talk. So I will start with some sort of uh, uh, background and motivation, okay? Uh, and then I will, uh, present a stochastic control formulation of a reinforcement learning problem. And then uh, here I will basically uh, give the solution to the problem and then uh, sort of uh, review the connection with the Gibbs measure and the Boltzmann exploration and so on in reinforcement learning. And then finally I will conclude. All right, so start, let, let me start. So of course we know that uh, you know that the, the key problem in reinforcement learning is a trade-off between exploration and exploitation, right? Uh, so so agents' actions or controls serve both as a means to explore, so that means to learn, to learn the, the environment, and a way to exploit, that is to optimize, right? To serve your original purpose. Now uh, in reinforcement learning, the control, your action is randomized, uh, which certainly is a, is, a, is a measure or distribution, right, to account for exploration. So exploration is, uh, is, 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 is through randomization, basically. 
And as, as I said, a natural and a crucial question is a trade-off between exploration of uncharted territory and exploitation of existing knowledge. Okay, so there's a huge literature on this, um, uh, on this, uh, you know, uh, trade 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 off uh, explore, exploitation exploration. For example, for the multi armed bandits problem, you know, so we have these uh, work, and then for general RL reinforcement learning problems, we have many many papers. But most existing works are based on the so called MDPs, Markov decision processes. So that means, uh, you know, uh, they are. You know, they are discrete time, discrete state, discrete action space. So everything is discrete, right? And uh, uh, <clears throat> for the MDPs, uh, there is this uh, uh, formulation called entropy regular regularized formulation. Okay, entropy regularized formulation. So, so that means uh, they explicitly incorporates exploration into the op op into optimization objective. So they sort of introduce the entropy of your exploration and put put that explicit, you know, put that explicit into the objective. So the op, op, the, the optimization, uh, so 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 the so the objective includes two parts. One is the original objective, the other one is the entropy. Okay, where's the trade-off weight on the entropy of the exploration? So in those papers, we know. On the other hand, uh, there have been you know many heuristics. Uh, proposed for uh, exploration measures, that is what kind of uh, distribution uh, you use, right, in order to sample the exploration, okay? So uh, typically, you know, people use Gaussian, you know, or more generally, you know, Boltzmann or Softmax, and the many papers, right? Okay, so this is the literature. Now, in our work, we concentrate on continuous time and space, okay, instead of speed. So, we, we do continuous time and continuous control action and continuous state or feature space, all right? Now, of course, uh, uh, such a setup can model situations uh, in which agents can interact with the environment at very, very high frequency, right? For example, you know, if we look at uh, high, you know, in, in finance, the high, frequency, high frequency trading, so it's almost like continuous time. Uh, autonomous driving, of course, that's another example, or even like a snowboard, snowboard riding and so on. Okay, so there are many, many practical examples in which you need to consider or, you know, study continuous time and uh, space uh, for which MDP may not work, right? But theoretically, theoretically, you know, if we cast a province in continuous time, then, you know, it will be sort of, you know, it will be easier to, to, to get elegant and insightful results. And that is because of the tool, many sort of tools like stochastic calculus, differential equations, and stochastic control, right? And, and probably most importantly, you know, when you, when you study problems in continuous time and space, then you might be able to lay theoretical underpinning to many, many sort of reinforcement learning heuristics give guidance to algorithm design and provide interpretability or explainability. Okay, so this actually is the, uh, is the, the, the ultimate goal of uh, our study. Okay, now there are recent papers along the line of this continuous time and space and uh, the first three papers basically are by us. So, so the first paper, which, just, which was just a, uh, uh, published in uh, Journal of Machine Learning Research. So, so we, we provide a general framework to study uh, reinforcement learning in continuous time and space. All right, so this is the, the main source of this talk actually. And then in, this is an application, a, a specific application to finance. Uh, so we use this uh, general framework to solve uh, the invariance portfolio selection problem. So this has also been just published. And then the third one is, is ongoing work. That is, we apply this general framework to, to the temperature control problem for Langevin, Langevin diffusion. Uh, that is, of course, for solving uh, the non convex optimization problem. Okay, so this is uh, an ongoing work. And there are others, you know, along some different directions, like mean field games and all, um, 
the, the time inconsistency, time inconsistent uh, reinforcement learning or stopping time and so on. Okay, so, so there is an increasing interest, uh, especially in the field of stress control uh, and stochastic uh, uh, analysis. Okay, so these these communities, the people in, in these communities are increasingly interested in uh, uh, machine learning problems using their formulation. All right. Okay, so 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 that is kind of you know uh, motiva motivation background. So now let's look at uh, the formulation. Okay, so we start with the classical stochastic control. Now, so so certainly there's a rich, very rich literature on classical stochastic control. Right. So um, let me just uh, say, you know, uh, there's an action space U, so that represents the constraints on agents' decisions or or actions, and then the admissible control is a, is a, is a stochastic process, okay? So, so called FT adapted process, uh, taking value in this action space, right? And you use uh, this script U to denote the set of all admissible control, and then there's a state dynamics. So state is governed by this uh, what we call stochastic differential equation, uh, in which U is a control. Okay, U is a control. X is the, the state. Now the objective is to achieve maximum expected total discount reward rep represented by this value function. Okay, so there's a this discounted integration integration. So R is a reward function, and the row is the discount rate. All right. So this is the optimal value function. Now, of course, you know uh, this is analogous, right? Analogous to the MD, MDP formulation, right? In MDP formulation, you have a transition probabilities, and then you also have an objective which resembles this. Of course, everything is discrete, uh, but now we we are in a continuous setup. All right. Now, the classical approach to solve this problem is dynamic programming, just like MDP uh, reinforcement. Basically, we also rely on dynamic programming, right? So the dynamic program, when the model is fully known, and when I say the model is fully known, that means like all these coefficients, B, sigma, R, rho, everything is, they, they are given, they are known, okay? So suppose we have already done animations, so therefore we know all the, all, you know, uh, you know what they are. So, so when the when the model is fully known, then there's a rich theory. For example, you can look at this this book, or this is a uh, you know my own book. So let me just quickly summarize. Uh, so the key is the so-called HGB equation, hamilton jacobi bellman equation, right? So the value function W satisfies this HGB equation. So this is. Uh, uh, in general, partial differential equation. So here, V double prime is a, is a Hayesian matrix. V prime is the gradient. And then you define the Hamiltonian. So what's inside? So basically, you define what's inside as a Hamiltonian. So this is a Hamiltonian. And interestingly, this Hamiltonian is analogous to the Q function in I. I will come back to this point later. Then, of course, the HGB equation can be rewritten in, in this form, right? And then, you know, there is a so-called verification theorem. Uh, to obtain the optimal uh, control, the optimal feedback control is just just do this maximization, you know. So it's the argmax of this edge of this this Hamiltonian, all right. So in other words, the optimal control or the action is guided by Hamiltonian. So at every state, so for any given state, so what you need to do is just to maximize over U. Okay, so that's what you do. So this is the direction you go. You just maximize over U, uh, and uh, and deterministically, you know. So there's no ambiguity. You just maximize this edge and get a U, and that's it. This is your optimal action. Okay, it's a state dependent action, but it tells you sort of unambiguously, right? Deterministically. But then, you know, of course, uh, under the reinforcement learning setting, where model is not known, the payoff of particular policy, for example, you have a strategy and you don't know what is the, the value of that strategy, right? You don't know. So you have to engage exploration to interact with the unknown environment and then learn its policy or, and, and improve its policy through try and error, okay? So this exploration is modeled by a distribution or randomization of control. So now it is a process. It's a process of measures. It's a process of distributions and uh, over the control space U, from which each trial can be sampled, 
right? So therefore, the notion of control is extend to distribution, randomization, like in that Ipsum greedy strategy, right? So basically, that is a distribution. All right. Now, the agent executes a control for n rounds, and at each round, a classical control is sampled from the distribution. So once you have a distribution, then you can sample a control from that distribution, and then you you execute it to the to the system, right? The reward of such a policy becomes accurate enough when n is large, right? So this is by law of large number, all right? So uh, this is exactly the way of uh, doing policy evaluation, right? So that's a very critical step in reinforcement learning. Okay, so we can uh, spend a little time on this uh, policy evaluation. Okay, so let's explain for the special case when the reward it only depends on you. Okay, so this is also called continuous continuous unbanded problem. Uh, so this is state, state independent reward. Uh, let, let's look at this case, right? because the state dependent case is the same. So you just consider n identical independent rounds of control province. At each round, you sample control UI on the pi, right? And then you execute it, right? Then at each time from the law of large number, the average reward over this small time period, t, t plus delta t, so it's this, right? So you just take an average, but then because of low, low large number, it, in, it converges to this thing. Now this, remember pi is the, here pi is the density function of the, of the distribution, okay? Pi is the density function. So, uh, so this basically is the, 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 the mean of your, the average your, of the, the value of your, in trials, right, over this small time period. So row of large number shows this. So this suggests that the reward function under exploration need to be revised. You cannot use the original, original reward function. You, ne you need to re revise your reward function to this form, okay? So, so, so from this analysis, it suggests that you need to consider this reward function instead, right? Now, similarly, uh, it, it, the, the dynamics you also need to be changed. You need to be revised. So instead of the original B, you need to revise to B tilde. But D, B tilde now is a is a function of the, the the distribution. So it is defined this way. Again, it is it is the mean over the control against this pi. And the sigma tilde, of course, is a standard deviation, right? So therefore, the variance should be the average of the variance. So so therefore, you know, you need to consider B tilde and sigma tilde. And the reward function, like we said, it should be R tilde. So I think this is one, one of our contributions. That is, in a continuous setup, you need to revise the, the dynamics, state dynamics, as well as the reward function to account for the learning. All right. Um, now, if, if the explorer, so we call it the exploratory formulation. So this mathematical easy formulation coincides with the so-called relaxed control in control literature. Okay, so there is uh, you know, a relaxed control, but the purpose of introducing relaxed control in, um, in, in, stochastic, in stochastic control is not uh, for reinforcement learning. Uh, actually, that was introduced for solving a theoretical question of existence of optimal control. This is an optimum control. So the relaxed control basically is convexification. Convex, once you convexify the, the set of, you know, the set of controls, then you have a resistance. So it's purely of theoretical interest, all right? We found that, we sort of, we found that uh, you know, you can use the same framework to study the reinforcement problem, all right? Okay, now let's continue. So if the model is fully known, then exploration is not needed, right? If we know control distribution digital basically goes back to the original, right? You don't do randomization, okay? So therefore, in the in the reinforcement learning context, we need to add a regularization term to sort of encourage exploration. What do you exploration to encourage? Now, how do we use uh, differential entropy to measure the, the level of exploration? So we use this. This is the, the Shannon's entropy, right? So pi is the control distribution, the density function, right? So we require this, the entropy to be greater or equal than A. So that means we we regulate, right? We require that, you know, uh, exploration, okay? 
So this is regularization, right? So therefore, uh, we have this so-called entropy regularized value function. Yes. So this is the original. Uh, this is the original uh, objective reward function, right? But then you add this entropy term. Okay, and then this lambda is an exogenous temperature parameter. Uh, so that is the sort of weighting parameter between the explorations. So this is the exploration part. This is the exploitation part. So see here, once you have this uh, formulation, the trade-off between exploration and exploitation is explicit, right? Using this uh, weight temperature parameter, right? Okay, so let's say our AX is here. AX is a set of all the admissible control distributions, okay? Uh, so this is the definition of the, you know, all the technical details about what is uh, what qualifies as a admissible control distribution. So you don't have to worry about that. I mean, this is just a sort of standard and technical. All right, so the, the important question is certainly, you know, can we solve the problem, right? Can we solve the problem? Now, we can solve that, the, the problem we just formulated uh, using again dynamic programming, the HGB equation, the verification theorem. Okay, so the V function, the value function satisfies this HGB equation. It's more complicated than the classical one because of the, the entropy. But, but the optimal control can be obtained by maximizing, it's just to maximize, so maximize, maximizing this. So this is so called the, you know, verification theorem. Now, of course, here, there is a constraint that, right? Because pi has to be a density function. Now density function means that it should integrate to one and it should be non-negative, right? So you treat this as a constraint in the apply Lagrange uh, approach, you can solve this problem. So you can solve this problem explicitly, okay? It's a calculus variation problem, variation problem, but you can solve it explicitly. explicitly. So the optimal, this, the optimal density function of the distribution is pi star u and x is of this form, is of this form. Now here, x is the state, okay? So it's a state dependent, right? So your control is state dependent. So that means it's feedback, it's a law, it's a feedback law. And the u is the, is the argument of the density function. Okay? u is the argument, is the variable of the density function. So you have this explicit expression. But now we can actually can relay this to the Gibbs measure. That is, you can rewrite this as pi star ux in this form because you see what's inside, this is nothing else than, than the H Hamiltonian. Remember we introduced this before, right? This is the Hamiltonian. So therefore, uh, pi star can be written in this way. This is the Hamiltonian and the Z lambda is just a normalizing factor so that this pi star is, uh, uh, pi star is, uh, is, a, is a density function. But then you know you recognize that this is a Gibbs measure, right? It's Gibbs, me Gibbs measure. So just just to those who may not be familiar with Gibbs measure, Gibbs measure is in uh, is is a measure uh, you know in for example st statistical mechanics. Gibbs measure is a probability distribution of the state of this uh, ensemble, right? So it's similar. E x is the energy, beta is the, beta is the reciprocal of the temperature. Uh, of course in in, in the, the um, thermodynamics, uh, you want to minimize the energy, right? Because of the second law. So you minimize, minimize, minimize the energy. So there's a negative sign here. Here we want to maximize Hamiltonian. So there's no, there's no uh, negative sign here. But you see, this is a Gibbs measure, right? So in other words, probability of choosing an action is proportional to an exponential function of the Hamiltonian value of that action. Okay. Now, Gibbs measure is easy to, to sample, right? So we know that we, there are lots of methods to sample Gibbs measure, uh, like this method. Um, all right, now let's continue. So on the other hand, this so-called Boltzmann or software, soft, sorry, softmax exploration is a, is a commonly used exploration strategy in uh, MDP, reinforcement learning, right? So it used the Boltzmann distribution to assign the probability selection action A, so it's like this. But you can see this Q is a Q function. But, but you know, this is just a, a widely used, but it's heuristic exploration strategy. Uh, uh, as pointed out by this paper, you know, there's virtually no theoretical understanding about like the limitation or a limitation of this uh, scheme or the actual benefits of this scheme. 
But our solution, see here, is a continuous analog of Boltzmann, SoftMax, right? With a theoretical foundation, so we derive it from the, this entropy regularization. So we do have a theoretical foundation to derive this, you know, this, uh, this, this distribution, which is analogous to the Boltzmann. Yes. So it, in turn, in, the, in a sense, the result in turn endorses our exploration formulation because our explore, exploratory formulation can explain, can explain the Boltzmann-like distribution, right? Or Gibbs, Gibbs measure, right? Also, it shows that this Hamiltonian, Hamiltonian actually is the analog of the Q-function in continuous time. Okay? Because you see, if you want to extend directly from discrete time to continuous time, you will be puzzled. What is the Q function? The Q function, because it, it will just uh, disappear. But from here, you can see that the analog of the Q function is Hamiltonian, okay, from these results, right? All right. So uh, we do apply this general result to linear quadratic, like linear state dynamics quadratic rewards. Then we show that the, the Gibbs measure becomes Gaussian, the Gaussian measure. So, so we provide a, a foundation for this, this Gaussian exploration, right? And then we apply this to the mean variance portfolio selection problem because mean variance portfolio selection problem is a linear quadratic problem. And then recently we uh, we solved this temperature temperature control for Langevin, Langevin division. So we, we find that uh, the optimal exploration measure is a, is a truncated exponential measure, right? Okay, so I think uh, I can conclude. Uh, I just want to say one thing. Uh, I just want to say this reinforcement learning and the control are two, you know, two fields that actually address largely similar problems. But somehow, as I said in the very beginning, they are developed. They have been developed somewhat separately. And communication, the exchange of ideas, are is a very important. Okay, to both fields. Uh, so for the for that matter, you, know, you can look at this survey paper, which really talk, which indeed talks about the connection between reinforcement learning and the control theory. So, so I think I I will I will I will end here. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Professor. So we have a couple of questions in the chat. Okay, other are coming. So I'll start with the first one. So what kind of situation would reinforcement learning be used when the model is fully known? Oh, when the model, model is fully known, then you don't need uh, reinforcement learning because you don't need to learn, right? But certainly uh, the assumption that the model is fully known is not reasonable because, you know, in many situations, in many practical examples, you don't, you don't know the model, right? So you have to engage exploration to learn things. Now, when the model when the model is fully known, there is a very rich, extend, extended, I mean, extensively studied uh, literature on stochastic control. So it's a very mature, uh, mature theory. So there's no problem. But we are really now stepping into a new sort of area in which you know the model is not fully known or is not known completely. Then what you what you do right so this is the this is the problem okay so okay. mustafa if you have a follow follow-up question please post it in the chat i'm going to the second question now what property does the boltzmann distribution have that make it useful in determining the actions that the agent takes Oh, the, the Boltzmann exploration, of course, is just a distribution. So it tells you, it tells you how would you do uh, randomization? How would you do, uh, how would you do uh, exploration? Okay, so, so, so that tells you exactly, you know, how do you sample, right? How do you sample your uh, exploration uh, strategy from a given distribution? So, yeah. Okay. So, last question so far. What are some real world control problems uh, that reinforcement learning has been able to solve? What type of control problem that reinforcement learning can solve? Yes, in the real world, the real world application. Oh, real world. Oh, okay. So, we already, uh, I mentioned in my talk, uh, we solved the uh, uh, so called mean variance portfolio selection problem. 
So, so no, I mean, for those who may not be familiar, I uh, mean, variance portfolio selection problem basically is to uh, to minimize the the risk of your portfolio, given that you want to achieve, uh, you know, uh, target expected return. For example, I say, oh, I want to achieve on average 10% return, right? But under that condition, I want to minimize my risk. Now for that problem, actually, we apply the general theory to solve the problem completely. I mean, just use this reinforcement learning framework in this Gaussian exploration. And then we com compare the, our results with, uh, with other existing results, okay? Through you know, either simulation and, uh, uh, you know, uh, backtesting, so, it, you know, we found that our uh, our performance is much 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 better than the other existing results. So so if you are interested, you can look at the paper. So they are all these are all reported. Yes, and in fact, the, the follow up question is asking about uh, uh, if you can provide the, the resource of the paper. So if you have if, the if I can provide what. Uh, there are uh, some resources about your example of the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, let me let me show my screen again. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned some of them. Uh, okay, so let me see. I think uh, this the so the first three papers. Now these two papers have been already published, so we can easily find. You can also find out. I find those two papers in my on my uh, homepage. I just Google my name. You will find uh, you know these papers in on my homepage. And the, this last paper we just uh, we just posted. Uh, we just posted on archive. Okay, so you can also uh, search this paper. You can get this paper. So so these are the three papers that sort of uh, you know uh, tell you, tells you the theory and and application of of this uh, of these results. Okay, awesome. So we have a, another question. So yeah. who were early mentors of you, Professor Zhu, and uh, what inspired you to get into this field? Oh, what inspired me? Um, what, what was the first question? The first one? Uh, who were your mentors? Oh, who were my, oh, I, I don't know what, do you mean my, my mentor, you mean my, PhD advisor. Yes, professor. Yes. So, oh, yeah. so, so uh, his name is Professor Lee, and he passed away a long time ago. He's an expert. He was he was an expert on um, optimal control theory. So I learned optimal control from him. And uh, like I said, I mean, uh, it is very natural to uh, to move into reinforcement learning from stochastic control. I mean, because you know, these two areas are intimately connected, you know, and, and it is a very natural thing. And then, of course, uh, the, the another big motivation is there are so many new problems in reinforcement learning. It's different from, although these two areas are indeed sort of connected, intimately connected, but there are so many new, uh, new problems motivated by the, you know, big data, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. So these are all new stuff. So therefore, you know, it's very natural that you you, you become curious, curious uh, about these problems and then you start to work on these problems. Yeah. Good answer. Yes. 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 Okay. So I have other questions if you have time because we are reaching. No, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. So okay. I will be happy so, to answer a couple, a couple more questions. Okay. So are there other mathematical analogs to the Hamiltonian Boltzmann Newtonian simulation of the randomness of atomic particles that are currently being researched? Are they okay? Can you read the question yes. again? Because it seems to be quite there Other mathematical analogs to the Hamiltonian Boltzmann Newtonian that are currently being researched? I'm sure, I mean, all these, you see, this is, I mean, like a Hamiltonian, right? Ham Hamiltonian originally appeared in mechanics, physics, mechanics, but then, you know, it found uh, its way to control theory and in, you know, like uh, in uh, the, uh, 
yeah, in physics and now in in statistics, stat statistical mechanics, and now in reinforcement learning. So there are many, many fields. Basically, they are, you know, they're studying sort of similar problems, similar problems related to the Hamiltonian Boltzmann expression, Gibbs measure, and all these things. Uh, now, I, I mean, there's because there are so many different areas, and I I, I don't think I can exhaust you know, sort of forgive exhaustive, exhaustive list uh, of these areas. So I, it really depends on what particular field you are doing, right? So you, whether you are, you are working in the area of like, uh, you know, optimal control or machine learning or optimization, and then, you know, there are some more specific, more specific, which, which might be all related to what I have just mentioned, Boltzmann, you know, Gibbs, you know, uh, Hamiltonian, you know, these, these things. Okay, so Mark, <laughs> if you have uh, any follow-up question, please post it in the chat. And I'm moving to the other question. So for someone who is new to reinforcement learning, what would be a good starting point? Well, good starting point is always reading literature, reading papers, right? So you can start with the screen time you know, like this multi-arm bandits problem. This is like a classical reinforcement learning problem. You can start with that, okay? And then try to understand all these discrete stuff, you know, MDPs and so on. But then if you, I think if you are sort of uh, uh, appropriately equipped, meaning that if you, for example, you are familiar with those uh, continuous setting uh, like, analysis, calculus, and stochastic calculus, differential equation, you know, if you are familiar with this sort of control, and then you can, I mean, it, I think it presents enormous opportunity, okay? Because the study on reinforcement learning in continuous setup, it's a new problem. I think it's a new problem. So there's so many open problems, open questions there. So there's, I, mean, I would say ample opportunities uh, to study. Right, because somehow in MDP, there are already many, many studies, right? In discrete time, you know, many, 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 many studies. And also many of them are really heuristics, okay? Heuristics. So when you move into continuous time, I think you should not just be satisfied with heuristics. You should try to sort of, uh, you know, establish regular, you know, theoretical, uh, theoretical foundations. Like for example, many people use Gaussian exploration, right? Gaussian, but they may not know why Gaussian exploration is good because right, Gaussian, or Gaussian uh, uh, the distribution is easy to sample, but why, right? Whether there's a connection to Gaussian, uh, Gaussian uh, exploration. So, so those are one interesting question, right? So now, you know, through continuous setup, you can relate, relate Gaussian exploration to entropy realization. So you see, so, so they, they, you know, there are lots of things that can be explained rather than just a sort of ad hoc uh, heuristics. Perfect answer. I see also um, Mark posted uh, some uh, uh, research on uh, the Armed Bandit uh, algorithm. So you can also try to take a look at that one. And we don't have any other questions so far. So okay, great. I'm gonna close the session here. Thank you so much. It was really thank you. interesting talk. I see other people share my thoughts. So, yes, thank you so much. And thanks uh, from uh, TMLS. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.